Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about adding free rent into a office model or a retail model, really any commercial model. Again, we're taking the financial model we've been working with for the analysis of a real estate investment and we're adding additional complexity. And I always like to say this before I start, uh, if you have any questions about the direction of the model, if there's something specific you'd like me to build, uh, you can let me know in the comments section or you can email me at josh at carrealestate.com and you should see that in the upper left hand corner of your screen. Awesome. So if I go over the rent roll, picking up from last time, we had a tenant and we had some rent and some downtime and we were rounding that off to two whole months. And if you remember, we had taken the downtime and we were doing month 19 and 20. There was two months of downtime. Now we need to add in some free rent. To do that, I'll build out my market leasing assumption. I'll call it free rent. And maybe I'll say there's three months of free rent if it's a new tenant and zero if it's a renewal. Good stuff. And again, we'll do the little calculation, which is the weighted average. This is not rounded. And that's let me make, make it more dramatic. Let me make it six and zero, which rounds off to 2.1. Okay, so if I do that, as we can see, it's taking a percentage of new and a percentage of renewal and it's blending it together. So six and zero blends out to 2.1 or six and two blends out to 3.4, but I'll do it at 2.1 and that's fine. So the key here is, if the old lease expires in month 18 and the new lease starts in month 21, we need to have that 2.1 kick in and give a month of free rent in month 21, 22, and 0.1 in 23. Uh, this is aggravating to people because with something like downtime, you can just say, well, it ended in 18, it starts in 21, just give downtime in 19 and 20. But with free rent, you want it to be all of 21, all of 22, and 0.1 of 23, so how do we do that? Well, let's see what we can do. So the first thing we gotta do is I've gotta build a schedule here. So if that's my, build a little schedule here. And in this case, I'm gonna say that we have a free rent schedule and I'm gonna have what the months are, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, and we need to apply it amount of free rent and how do I figure out how much free rent we're giving? Well, just give me a little space. I'll say that the total free rent or the total weighted weighted free rent is the 2.1 that we saw up here. And then in here, we need to figure out when it applies. So I'm going to do an if statement. And to do this, I'm going to use round downs and round ups. Round downs, uh, you can round, say, 2.1 down to 2, whereas round up, you could take 2.1 and round it up to 3. And by a good judicious use of round downs and round ups, I can build a schedule that will put a 1 in month 1 and 2, a 0.1 in month 3, and zeros in month 4, 5, and 6. And then we could layer it in. So here goes. First, I've got an if statement. I'm gonna say, if the current month we're in is less than or equal to the rounded down of 2.1 dollar sign comma zero, so that's gonna round 2.1 down to zero, then in that case, put in the value one. So if I just did that, and let me just start it there. If I just did that, and then I said, uh, I'll put in something called something else, just so you can see what it does. So here it's saying a C25 less than or equal to round down C23 comma zero, co close parentheses comma one comma something else. If I do that, and I drag it across, we'll get ones and ones, and then something else, something else, something else, something else. Now, in something else for month three, I'm gonna wanna put a point one, and in something else for four, five, six, I'm gonna wanna put in some zeros. Now, whenever you have three conditions, you're gonna need an if inside of an if. 
right? Because a good old fashioned if is two conditions, an if and an if is three. So then I could say if this cell is equal to round up, open parentheses, that comma zero, close parentheses, then take this cell, dollar sign, minus, and, oh, we're sorry, I should say minus round down that cell, comma zero, close parentheses, comma zero, close parentheses. Now, that's going to work, at least it should, when I Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, I forgot a dollar sign. Yeah. Okay. Comma zero. Oh, I know what it's doing. Sorry. Got to put more dollar signs in there. I keep forgetting the dollar signs. There it is. Okay. So this is what it's doing. It's saying, you know, I'll do it for month five so you can see it. So it's saying, look at the month we're in. If that's less than or equal to round down C23, then put in a one. In other words, in month one and two, uh, since that month one and two is either less than or equal to the rounded down to 2.1, it puts in a one. That's the early months. Then it says, if the month I'm in is equal to round up C23, in other words, if it's 2.1 months of free rent, that would round up to three, so that would be the third month. In other words, that's the partial month, the point where some of the free rent kicks in, some doesn't. In that case, take C23 minus round down C23. In other words, 2.1 minus two, because the round down C23 zero is two, and that would do 0.1 in month three, and if not zero. So again, the first question is putting in the one, the first part of the second if does the point one, and the second part of the second if just puts in zeros. So that turns 2.1 into 1.1, one, one, point one, zero, zero. You get the idea. Now what I got to do is I got to layer that in. So I'm going to put in a line, and I'll call that free rent because... Why not? Or actually, let me put it after it. I think it's cleaner looking when it's after it. But again, people people disagree on this. <coughs> so now I need to put in the free rent. Now, of course, month one of the free rent is actually month 19. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an extra line in here. And I'm going to say actual month. And I'm going to take the lease expiration date and the new lease, and that's how I'm going to kick it in. So month 21 is the new lease. That's the actual month, and I'll do that plus one. And I'll carry that bad boy across. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And then I could just do a good old-fashioned H lookup, and I could say, okay, look at this. Look for the month I'm in in this table. If you find the month I'm in in the table, give me the value in the second position. If not, and, and match, that's the false. And what that's going to do, if I throw some dollar signs on that, that's going to either give me an NA or it's going to give me, going all the way to the end here, it's going to give me NAs. And so I got to <clears throat> month 21, 22, 23, which gives me 1, 1, and point 0.1. And then around that, I'll throw an if error. So then I'll say, okay, fine. Let's do an if error. And if you do the H lookup and it comes back bad, dump in a zero. If not, do what you're going to do anyway. So that gives me zero and gives all the way across. Zeros, ones, and point ones. And then, of course... I don't want it to just be one or point one. I want to show a negative, right? So I'm going to say 
take that and multiply that by that 23 bucks, and that would give me negative 23, negative 23, or negative 2.1. I can then change the sum function here to sum those three cells. And then I could take these cells here, and I could, oops, sorry. I could take these cells, and I could copy it to the right, and take these three cells and copy it to the left. And what we should now see is I've got a bunch, I've got 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Then I get to month 19 and 20, there's two months of downtime. And then starting in 21, there's two months of free rent and 0.2 of free rent. And that is my, uh, that's my schedule. And that's all fine and good. And that seems to work. Um, Cool. So that's how you layer in free rent and hopefully you find that useful. Now, normally at this point, I would probably then take it and I'd like sum it up to annuals and I'd link it into the cash flow model. But to be very honest, as this thing's getting more complex, I think it's becoming clear to you that leaving this on an annual basis is probably not the right way to do it. So what we'll do in part nine is we'll rejigger this thing, we'll run it as all monthlies, and then we'll use some sum ifs to get it back to annuals and that would be a good thing to do. Uh, but again, that's for the next part. Uh, if you're interested in more content like this, or if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me again at josh at carrealestate.com, or uh, you can go to the website, obviously, or if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every few weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. Uh, and you can read more about that on the website. So thanks again, and keep on building better models.